Hi, so in this video I'd like to go over what I actually looked into my first video, which was the start stopping of EC2 instances based on the schedule. Uh, so in that one we, we took advantage of AWS Lambda in, in the editor, in the, in the actual browser, and we configured up a couple of little functions that would actually target EC2 instances that we provided based on the event that was passed in. Uh, we then wired that up with CloudWatch events, and we used that on a cron schedule basis. That's all great, and for simple examples like that, for, for learning, for also very trivial examples, you know, wiring up in the browser is fine, but actually understanding and also if, for the future use uh, of understanding what all these different bits are. And also, you know, you can see that we actually have to hit a, a fair few different bits there to actually understand what the actual full scope of the application, what the actual delivery is, or what the actual meaning of the application is. It can get a little bit tedious and you'll probably end up with, you know, external documentation and things, which is unnecessary, really. Let's let's take advantage of something instead then using something like serverless. And essentially, what this does is it focuses on your application and not the, your infrastructure, like the tagline says. So it abstracts away a lot of the necessary evils that you have for different cloud providers, cloud platforms. So you can see AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure and OpenWhisk. And it will actually just let you implement, say, the functions and also then the definitions of how those functions are going to be called uh, in a very easy, co-located way. So you'll be able to explicitly see what's going on. So let's go to the terminal. And we're going to start off with a new serverless application. So I'm going to do serverless create and I'm going to provide the template. And because there's so many different providers and also languages that you can use, here we have to say we want AWS or Node.js. I'm going to explicitly pass in a path, so start, stop, EC2 instances, and we're going to create this. So if you haven't already set up serverless before, uh, there's a lot of good documentation online. I'll put some in the show notes, and that will allow you to go through and actually configure uh, you know, AWS keys, etc. So if we ls, or cd, sorry, into start there, and we ls, you can see we've got two files. We've got handler, which actually has the implementation, and serverless, which is describing what's actually needed, both infrastructure-wise and how we want to set up and use the, each of the individual functions. So let's go to a text editor. And you can see here that the serverless YAML file defines, pretty much describes the application for us. And there's a lot of good commented out boilerplate of all of the different configurations and setup you can actually have. I'm going to keep this simple and I'm going to actually going to delete all of this so we can actually just write our own one to make it easy to understand and learn from. And then we've also got a handler. And in this case, what this is doing is it's just probably using something like API gateway and returning a, a JSON response back. So again, I'm going to delete this so we can implement our own. So in the serverless YAML file, so say this defines the actual application for us and all of the different requirements, infrastructure needs, uh, roles, etc., like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to first say we want the service and we're going to provide a unique name for the service for us. So it's instances. And then I need to provide the provider information. So we're going to say that we're on the AWS stack. We've got a runtime, which is Node.js 6.10. And we're also going to provide the stage and the region. US one. So the stage just allows you to break off all the different functions, all the different implementations into different environments. Say you may have a testing environment, a beta, alpha, you know, staging, uh, all this. At, by default, the stage is actually development, but because we're going to be running this in, in quote, production environment, we might as well just have it in prod for now. And also the region is where actually all the functions are going to be deployed. So let, let's spec out our functions. And this is a nice thing about serverless is it allows you to kind of before you actually do the implementation, spec out exactly what you want and clearly see how all these things are going to interrelate. So we're going to say we want a handler, and the handler is actually from the handler file, and it's going to be the start exported function. And we're going to have a couple of events that are going to fire this off. We're going to have a schedule event, and it's going to have a rate. And we're actually going to take advantage of some serverless custom variables here. So I'm going to say custom, and I'm going to say that we're going to start with a cron and it's going to be six in the morning that we're going to start up this this cron and so then here we need to actually explicitly include that so we're going to say self custom start and then we can provide the inputs so you can see that this is actually just doing the wiring up of the CloudWatch event for us but because it, how nice it is with serverless because it abstracts that away it's able to co-locate these two together where the actual implementation function and also all of the events and etc event attributes that are needed so here again i'm going to take advantage of an instance variable and i'm going to 
sorry take advantage of a serverless variable and use the instance id and then i'm going to take also i'm going to use the assume that we're going to use the providers region just so we can show off how we can use that okay and then let me just add in a demo instance id and we're going to need stop so we might as well add in that variable now so we're going to say at 6 30 in the evening we would like this ver this uh, function this ec2 instance to stop so in a similar manner, let's say, okay, we'd like to stop. We've got a handler, and we would like to provide the handler function. We'd like to use the stop exported function. We've got a couple of events, and we're going to say on a schedule again, we're going to use the rate of custom stop. And the input is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be exactly the same. OK, so this is a very simple serverless YAML file, um, you know, definition. It's just it's just showing that you can take advantage of, you know, events and intertwine those with how the functions um, naming of the functions, where they're actually located, uh, take advantage of some custom variables and also just easily configure it. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to, go to a handler. So this is the implementation. So I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to copy and paste in the work that we did with the first example. Uh, so here you can see we've got the stop and the start functions. And we're just using, again, the AWS TK to actually start up and stop these ET to EC2 instances. Finally, all we need to do now is add a new role for the EC2 for accessing EC2 instances based uh, within our lambdas. So here you can see it following on from what we did from the first video where we added in and created a new role and assigned it. Here we're saying start instances and stop instances. And we're allowing this and essentially what that does is it attaches it to both the start and stop functions for us so we can actually access ec2 from here again i'm being quite uh, open with it you know maybe you want to lock this down maybe now that we've got the ec2 instance uh, id in here we can probably do some funky stuff there so now what we're going to do start this up so we're going to say serverless deploy tag v for verbose so we can actually see what's going on and what you'll see now is it's going to start packaging up all those bits. It's going to create the CloudFormation scripts and stuff we need for it. Uh, and you can see now actually at CloudFormation, it's going to actually create that, upload that to AWS where it can then ex then extract that and actually run that CloudFormation script in, in the cloud. Okay, and then now it's completed. So you can see here also if I scroll back up that it added the permissions. So the start stop um, scheduled permissions for that it actually added the functions in, of course, and it added in and it took advantage of the cloud formation stuff to add the roles. So we just didn't have to deal with any of this stuff and it was all abstracted away for us. So now with that created, the best way is actually to probably go into Lambda and CloudWatch and see what it's actually done. So you can see here, if I refresh, okay, we can see that we've actually got the two functions. So if we open one of them up, uh, this is one thing actually, so because we define the handler and we define both functions in that single handler, serverless isn't intelligent enough on its own, probably using things like web, uh, sorry, the web plug plugins and things like that, it can probably get around using things like tree shaking and, and dead code elimination and code that it doesn't actually need. But because of the fact that we actually included both functions in that at that single handler, it's just uploaded both. Uh, so it, it's good practice probably in a production environment. And if you get, you know, sufficiently large functions to actually break these up, basically, you know, not only just for the fact of this, but also probably because of understandability of the code as well. So in here, you can see, yeah, we've just got a simple functions and it's targeting the handler of the start. And it's also done the stop one for us. And likewise, the handler stop. And now if we go to CloudWatch, you can see here that it's actually enabled and started up the two scheduled events for us. So let's actually open up one of these events. So you can see here, brilliant, it's actually start, this is the one which will start. So we can say 6.30 in the morning and it's got a constant input JSON stream of, you know, our, our provided in instance and the region we were in. So this is the actual region that we provided with the, the server, serverless, sorry, provider um, variables. And if we actually go back to rules and we go to stop and you can see here, brilliant, at 6.30 in the evening, it would actually just target that and stop it as well. So you can see there that it's actually completely abstracted away a lot of the boilerplate that we would have to we would have needed to do, you know, clicking around here, etc. It co-locates all that in a very logical, easy to understand unit, uh, which, can, you know, obviously you can obviously version control and give it to another another developer to understand. And they could logically see based on the fact that everything's there, what's actually happening and what's the story of the function. So I hope that's helped. Um, I'm hoping to do a couple more videos on this and kind of expand on this example. You taking advantage of other serverless stuff. So. Yeah, so I'll see you next video. Bye.